Hi CCC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet and today we're going to learn how to do this Halloween Among Us Amigurami. Please hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bells, and please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Now let's go ahead and get into the materials for this project today. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need some crochet hooks. So you're going to need a five millimeter crochet hook for the actual project. Then you're going to need a 3.75 millimeter hook for the glasses and for the pumpkin on the top of the head. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a darning needle, or you might call it a crochet needle. And you'll also need some stuffing and you'll also need some different color yarns. I will put a link in the description below for all of my materials, and that includes the colors of yarn and types of yarn that I use. So let's go ahead and get started on the main body of the Among Us Amigurami. So we're gonna pull out our five millimeter hook and our orange yarn, and we're going to make a magic circle. Into this magic circle, you're going to put six single crochets. If at any point in this video you don't know how to do some of these stitches or such as the magic circle, please look in the description box below for my beginner's crochet video. So after you get your six single crochets into your magic circle, you're going to pull tight. And now we're going to be working in the round, meaning we're not going to slip stitch to close the circle. We're just going to go to our next available stitch and start working into that. So in this next available stitch, we're going to put two single crochets into that stitch. So one and two. And into the next stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. One and two. You're going to keep doing that all the way around for a stitch count of 12. So to make it easier, you could just count to 12, doing two single crochets in each stitch. Now we're going to put in a stitch marker. I'm going to use a piece of yarn, but you can use any stitch marker you wish. Now we're going to go into our next available stitch and we're going to put one single crochet. Into the next, we're going to put two single crochets. Into the next, one single crochet. And into the next, two single crochets. You're going to do that all the way around for a stitch count of 18. And just so you know, we are starting off with the legs. So we are starting on one of the legs at this time. When you get around to the end of this round, you should end with two single crochets where your stitch marker is. So in this next stitch, we're going to put one single crochet, and then we're going to remove our stitch marker, and in that stitch, we're going to put two single crochets, and then we're going to put our stitch marker back. What's this in here? Nice maker for Nana. 
Now you're going to be working in rounds of single crochet. So you're simply going to put one single crochet in each stitch around, just like this. And when you get around to the end, you will remove your stitch marker, put your final single crochet there, put your stitch marker back, and keep going in the round. You're going to do eight rounds of single crochet, and then after you do that, you will be finished with your first leg. You will cut off and then you will start your other leg doing exactly what we've just done. You can rewind and restart the video if needed. Now we have both of our legs finished. One of our legs is still attached to our working yarn. As you can see, all the stitch markers are still in place. Please go ahead and remove the stitch markers and place this extra piece of yarn where we cut off back inside the leg because we're going to need that later. Just like this. Then you're going to take your leg that is still on the working yarn, remove that stitch marker, and now we're going to join these two legs together. What I like to do is place one leg right close up to where we stopped on our other leg and then the next available stitch after that stop point is where I'm going to begin. And I'm simply going to put my hook in, bring in my working yarn, and do a slip stitch. In that same place I just did a slip stitch, I'm going to work a single crochet. It's going to seem kind of odd, but just go ahead and put one single crochet in there. In that space, I'm going to put my stitch marker. Now I'm going to start working single crochets all the way around. I'm going to do that on camera with you so you can see. So we're just going to go into our next available stitch and work a single crochet and keep doing that all the way around. I would like you to have a total of 36 on this round. You might have to add stitches or take away stitches. Either way, just make sure that you end up with 36 by the time you get to your stitch marker. So just count as you go along. And I'm going to show you what to do when we get to the part where the legs join. So I've just worked that last stitch for that leg, and now I need to jump over to my next leg. So I'm literally going to look over at my next leg and see where my next available stitch is. So my next available stitch is right there, and I'm going to put my hook in and do a single crochet. And I'm just going to keep single crocheting along, counting as I go, making sure I get my 36. Now I've reached my other side, I'm going to pull out my stitch marker. I'm going to put a, sing a single crochet there. I'm going to put my stitch marker back. And I'm going to do another row of single crochets, making sure that I have a count of 36. If for some reason in this, this last row that I worked, I missed one or something happened, this is my chance to fix that, to make sure that I have 36. So I'm just going around and doing single crochets.
And now I'm working my way back to my stitch marker and I'm counting to make sure I have 36. I don't. So in this last stitch, I'm going to put two to make sure that I have 36. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that piece of yarn that we saved over in the middle of that leg. So as you can see in the middle here, there is a tiny hole. So you're going to take that piece of yarn that we saved on the inside of our leg and we're going to place it on our darning needle. Then I'm going to simply sew together this little hole. Using a whip stitch, just going back and forth. Then I'm going to work in this piece of yarn three times. One, two, and three. Just want to make sure it never comes undone. Now I can cut off. And now it's time to do some rows of single crochet. So you're going to do five rows now, or rounds rather, of single crochet. So just round and round you go, do five of those, and remember to move, remove your stitch marker and place it back for every round. So now we've completed our five rounds of single crochet, and now we're going to do a round of increase. So we're going to put a single crochet into our next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. And in the next stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. You're gonna do that all the way around. You should have a stitch count of 42 at the end of this round. Working to the end now, you're going to remove your stitch marker, place your last two single crochets, and put your stitch marker back. And now you're going to work eight rounds of single crochet. So you're just going to go into your stitch, every available stitch, and put one single crochet all the way around for eight rounds. Remember to remove your stitch marker at the end of each round and then place it back. Now we've completed our eight rounds of single crochet and now we need to do some decreases. This is what it looks like so far. So now we're going to go into our next available st stitch and work one single crochet. And the next 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 one single crochet. So that's five. And now we're going to do an invisible decrease. So working through the front loops only, you're going to go into your next stitch, front loop, next stitch, front loop, and then pull your yarn through both of those front loops and do one single crochet. And again, five single crochets. And then an invisible decrease. Go through the front loops only. Pull your yarn through and do one single crochet. Do that all the way around. And then when you get to the end, you should be working a decrease in your last two stitches. Remove your stitch marker. Do your decrease. And then put your stitch marker back.
Now we're going to work another round of decreases. So you're going to put a single crochet in the next four stitches. And then you're going to work an invisible decrease going through the front loops only, pulling your yarn through, and then doing a single crochet. Again, four single crochets. And then a decrease. Front loop only, front loop only. Pull your yarn through and do a single crochet. When you get to the end, pull out your stitch marker. You should be working a decrease in these last two stitches. And then put your stitch marker back. Now you're going to work a single crochet in the next three stitches. And then you're going to do an invisible decrease. Again, front loop only. Pull your yarn through, do a single crochet. And again, three single crochets. And then a decrease. Do that all the way around. Then when you get to your stitch marker, you should be working your last decrease in these two stitches. Pull your yarn through and put your stitch marker back. You will notice at this point that your work starts caving in a little bit. That's okay. That's exactly what it should look like. Now you're going to go into your next two stitches and put one single crochet. And then you're going to put a decrease. Front loops only, pull your yarn through, do a single crochet. Again, a single crochet in the next two stitches, and then a decrease. You're going to do that all the way around till you get to your stitch marker. And when you get to your stitch marker, you should be working your last decrease. So work your decrease and put your stitch marker back. Now we're going to do one more row before we start stuffing. So one single crochet in the next stitch and then a decrease one single crochet in the next stitch and then a decrease you're going to do that all the way around When you get to your stitch marker, pull it out, work your last decrease, and then put your stitch marker back. And now we're going to start stuffing our project. So pull your yarn out really far, your working loop yarn. Put your stitch marker back. And that's prepared now for you to start stuffing your work. What I like to do with this Among Us project is take my stuffing and start stuffing the legs each one at a time. Get them as full as stuffed as I possibly can and then I'll start building up on the body as I go along. Remember to use your hands to form your project. Then when you get up to the top we're going to do another row of decreases. So you're going to go all the way around in each stitch and do a decrease. So in these next two stitches, do a decrease. And the next two stitches, do a decrease. And the next two, do a decrease, an invisible decrease. So you're working in these front loops just like we did for our other rounds. And this is just going to close up the top of your work. 
I'm making sure to work especially tight and carefully as I work on the top of my project so that my holes aren't gaping and my stuffing doesn't show through too badly. Now it's time for me to pull out my stitch marker for good and work my last decrease. You're going to notice that there's still a small hole there, but we're going to cut off, tighten up our yarn, and then we're going to go in for one last slip stitch into the next available stitch. Pull our yarn through and pull tight. Then I'm going to put this, put that extra piece of yarn onto my darning needle. After I get my yarn on my darning needle, I'm going to take it and I'm going to go through what little bit of hole we have left there on the top and go to the other side. I'm going to go back into the same spot and pull it to the other side, pulling a little bit tightly. Then go back in again. And now I'm just working it into the actual project so it never comes undone. Then I'm going to pull tight, cut, and then that piece will go back inside. Now, if there is a little space on the top, don't worry about it because that's where you're going to put your pumpkin. Now we're going to start working on the backpack. So take your orange yarn and make a slip knot. Then you're going to chain 10. Then you're going to work a half double crochet into the second stitch from the hook all the way down. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and in that same space where we just did our ninth half double crochet, we're going to work two more half double crochets in that same space. So now that means we have 11 half double crochets. Now in that same spot again, you're going to put another half double crochet, so that's 12 into the next another one, 13, into the next, 14, into the next, 15, into the next, 16, into the next, 17, and into the next, we're going to put 18, 19, and then one more to make 20. So now all the way around, you have 20 half double crochets. Now working in the round, you're gonna go into your next available stitch and put one half double crochet. And in the next, one half double crochet. So you're going to be putting one half double crochets all the way around. And what I like to do, instead of using a stitch marker, is just count to 60. So from where you first started and going all the way around and around, you're going to put 60 half double crochets. Which is technically three more rows of half double crochets. But this is your project and your little backpack, so you can make it as big or small as you wish. But as you can see, you're just going round and round with half double crochets. As you do that, your project, the little backpack is going to get taller and deeper. The sides will start turning in on each other, just like that.
now I've finished my backpack and now it's time for me to leave a very long piece so I can sew it onto my work and go ahead and tie off. Now I'm going to go into my next available stitch and do a slip stitch just so it looks even. Then I'll pull through and tie off. Now I'm going to take some of my stuffing, not a lot, but just a little bit, and I'm going to stuff the backpack. I'm going to push the stuffing down to the bottom of the backpack because I want it to look tapered towards the top. So I'm pushing my stuffing in and I'm closing the top because as you can see, it's fuller at the bottom and goes lighter up at the top. Now I've decided to put a little bit more stuffing in. Then I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to place it onto this piece of yarn that I have left over, not only to sew the backpack together, but to sew it onto the actual project itself. So I'm going to put that on my darning needle and I'm going to sew the backpack together up at the top, pushing my stuffing down towards the bottom. Since this isn't on the side where I want it to start, I'm going to take my yarn and my darning needle and I'm just going to go into the side a couple times till I get to where I want to start on the other side. Then I'm going to start doing a whip stitch all the way down to close this backpack up. Now it's time for me to sew my backpack on to my project. So I'm going to pick the side that I want to put the backpack on. And I'm going to place it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight rows down from the top of the head is where I'm going to place my backpack. And I'm simply going to whip stitch the very top of the backpack right there in the middle of the project from the eighth row down from the head. Then I'm going to turn it the other way around and I'm only going, I'm going to work through my project going down towards the bottom on the inside of the project because I'm not going to sew the sides of the backpack. I'm just going to sew the top and the bottom. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom and I'm going to whip stitch all the way down. This is going to make sure that it gives it that stand out appearance that the Among Us has. If you sewed the sides down, it would flatten it. So just sew the top and the bottom. When you get done with that, you're going to take your darning needle and you're going to secure your yarn inside the project. So I'm going to go through the middle, with the stuffing and all, and then I'm going to go back in to the same place, go out again, and then I'm going to do that one more time. That's just to make sure that it never comes undone. Now I'm going to cut and pull tight. Now as you can see, I see a little indentation and that's from me pulling on my thread or my yarn. So I'm just going to pull it out with my needle just like this. And that's a little trick with amigurami because sometimes you do get indentions. So now we have our backpack completed. I think it looks great. Now we're going to take out a 3.7 millimeter hook 
and our blue yarn and we're going to make the glasses. So doing a slip knot and then we're going to chain 10. We're going to work this very similar to how we work the backpack. After you chain 10, do one extra one for 11. And then on the second chain from the hook, you're going to single crochet all the way down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And in that same space, you're going to work two more single crochets for twelve. And turn your work and in that same space you're going to put another single crochet which will be 13 and then working across the top single crochet so there's 14 15 16 17 18 19 and 20. So now you have 20 single crochets all the way around. Just like we did the backpack, we're going to be working in the round. And you're going to start counting. So you're going to do single crochets of 20 all the way around. So that was one round and now you're going to do two more. So after you did your initial 20, you should have three more rounds of single crochets. Okay. So now, so now you're going to pull that. in your brown yarn. So you're going to go into your next available stitch. Pull up like you were going to do a single crochet with the blue. And now you're going to bring in the brown. And now you're going to work single crochets all the way around with the brown. Now this is a dark brown, so it may appear black to you, but it is actually just a dark brown Red Heart yarn. Okay. 
when you get after your you finish your last stitch with your brown you're going to slip stitch to the beginning there and then you're going to leave a long piece to cut off because you're going to use this brown to sew on to the project so just pull through and pull tight your yarn then you're going to take all your scragglies and you're just going to place them right inside the glasses because you're going to be sewing this onto the front of your project so it doesn't matter if it's on the inside it's never going to come undone so counting from the top one two three four five six you're going to place your glasses right there in the middle the sixth row down and then I'm going to take a stick pin and I'm going to place it right there in the middle so it doesn't move from where I want it to be then I'm going to place my brown piece of yarn onto my darning needle and I'm going to start sewing around the glasses to secure onto the front of the project and I'm going to be working a whip stitch I'm going to try to get as close as I can to the actual glasses with my yarn so that it doesn't show too much on the orange. I really needed more sticks pins for this so that it could stay put but I'm using my hands to do that as well which is also making the camera shake sorry about that but when you're doing this I would suggest using at least four stick pins I only had the one Now as I'm working around this, I'm making sure that I'm going to leave a small space because I am going to take some stuffing and fill in the glasses area so that it's more pronounced. So I'm over here to the other side and I've left a small hole so that I can place some stuffing inside there maybe a little too small <laughs> once I get my stuffing in and I get it how I want it I'm going to finish up sewing that little brown piece there on Now I'm going to work in my brown yarn into the project so it never comes undone. So I'm going to work it in three times. And I'm just going back and forth inside the glasses with this brown yarn. Now I can cut off my yarn. Now I'm going to take my white yarn and I'm going to do the little accent piece that goes inside the glasses. 
So I'm just going to take out about a foot, maybe a little bit of less of the white yarn, and I'm going to place it onto my darning needle. I'm going to go inside of the project, just like this, pull through, but just so. Then I'm going to go around to the other side. Don't pull tight or else it will come undone. And then I'm going to do that one more time just to make it thicker. Just like that. Then to make sure it never comes undone, I'm going to go through the same spot and go out on the other side of my project. Now I can cut off. If I pull tight enough, it should go back in. Now we're going to work on the pumpkin, which sits on the top of the Among Us. So I'm going to take my 3.75 millimeter hook and I'm going to make a slip knot, I mean a magic circle, excuse me. Into this magic circle, I'm going to put six single crochets. Then I'm going to tighten up my magic circle and I'm going to be working in the round. So I'm not going to do a slip stitch. I'm going to go into my first available stitch and I'm going to start working single crochets. So I'm going to go into this first stitch and work two single crochets. I'm going to do two single crochets all the way around for a stitch count of 12. After you get your count of 12, you're going to need a stitch marker. I'm going to use a piece of yarn, but you can use whatever you wish. So now I'm going to place my stitch marker in the last stitch that I made. And now I'm going to do a row of increase. So in my next stitch, I'm going to put one single crochet. And the next stitch, I'm going to put two single crochets. And the next stitch, one single crochet. And in the next, two single crochets. And I'm going to do that all the way around for a stitch count of 18. When you get to your stitch marker, pull it out and put your last two single crochets there in that stitch and then put your stitch marker back. And now we're going to do another round of increase. So you're going to go into your next available stitch and put one single crochet and the next one single crochet and in the next two single crochets. Again, one single crochet, one single crochet, and then two single crochets. And you're going to do that all the way around for a stitch count of 24. When you get to your stitch marker, you're going to pull it out, work your last two single crochets in there, and then put your stitch marker back. Now you're going to be working rounds of single crochet. So you're just going to go into every stitch around and do one single crochet just like this. And you're going to do that for three rounds.
And when we come back with these three rounds of single crochets done, we're going to start working on some decreases. Now we've finished our three rounds of single crochet and now we're going to do some decreases. Go into your next stitch and put one single crochet, your next one single crochet, and in the next you're going to do an invisible decrease. Again one single crochet, one single crochet, and then invisible decrease. Going into the front loops only, pull your yarn through and then do a single crochet. So just keep doing that all the way around. When you get to your last two stitches, pull out your stitch marker and work your last decrease of that round. Going in the front loops only, pull through your yarn and do a single crochet. Then place your stitch marker back and we're going to do another round of decreases. So you're going to go into your next available stitch. And you're going to put one single crochet. Then you're going to do a decrease, front loops only, pull your yarn through, do a single crochet, then go in your next stitch, put one single crochet, and then do another decrease. You're going to do that all the way around, one single crochet and then a decrease. And when you get to your last two stitches, pull out your stitch marker and work your last decrease. Going through the front loops only, pulling your yarn through, and then doing a single crochet. Then you can put your stitch marker back. And now it's time to grab some stuffing and we're going to stuff our pumpkin. And then after we stuff our pumpkin, then we're going to close it up. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to keep my yarn, working yarn loop pulled out pretty far. Just like that. And then I'm going to stuff my pumpkin. Now when you're working tiny little amigurami like this, the hole at the top seems much larger than when you're making big projects. So it's important that you use your fingers to stuff your stuffing as far down as you can. Now we're going to work decreases all the way around. So in each two stitches, we're going to work an invisible decrease. Going in through the front loops only of every two stitches.
when you get to the end, you're going to cut off a long piece. You're going to go through your next available stitch, pull through and do a slip stitch and then pull through your yarn and tie off. Then you're going to take your darning needle and you're going to go back and forth at the very top to close it off. Now to make your jack-o-lantern face, you're going to take your dark brown yarn and put it on to your darning needle. Now for our jack-o-lantern face for the top of our Among Us, we're just going to put two diamond shape eyes. So to do that, you will literally make a diamond shape with your yarn on your darning needle. So you will find the place you want it to be, count past the top of the head. You will go in and start off with the bottom, go up to the top, go back down. And basically what you're doing is you're using your yarn to make an outline of the diamond shape that you need. And you're going in and out of the same places only showing what part of the yarn that you want to be shown. So as you can see, I've made the diamond shape now, and now all I would do is fill it in. So to make the stem, you're going to chain two, and the second chain from the hook, you're going to put four single crochets. And you'll tighten up and then working in the round you're just going to go round and round putting one single crochet in each stitch around for 16. so you're just going to count to 16 all the way around working in each stitch when you're only working with things like four single crochets it's kind of hard to get through both stitches. Sometimes you'll only get through the front or through the back loop, but that's okay for this stem because you want it to look a little bit bumpy and lumpy because then it'll look even more realistic. So just count to that 16. And as you keep going around counting to 16, you'll notice that your stem will start getting longer and longer. And then we're gonna do a little thing at the end that'll even make it more elongated. So don't be worried if it doesn't look long enough to you. So now that you've got your 16, you're going to leave a good bit to sew on to your pumpkin. But in the last space, you're going to put a slip stitch. Then pull through your yarn and tie off. Then you're going to take both ends and you're going to pull tight. This is what I told you would make it look even longer. Then you're going to take the piece that's not long on the other side and you're going to sew it in. You're going to go right through the middle of the stem three times. One, two, and three. Then you can cut off. Then you're going to take your other side, put it onto your darning needle. You're going to find the center of the top of your pumpkin and you're going to go straight down the bottom of it and through the pumpkin and that'll pull your stem up and then you're just going to go back and forth through the pumpkin to the top of the stem and going back through to hold it down into place once you're done with that you're going to take some of your orange yarn put it onto your darning needle and you're going to sew this onto the top of 
your Among Us project. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. Please feel free to get, send me pictures of your finished work. You can find my Instagram and my Facebook and my email in the description box below. Again, please don't forget to like this video if you do like it. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you really love the video, please share it. It helps so much. Happy crocheting, guys. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween, and I hope you stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.